So we want to start section 3.2, which we call the growth of functions, but this is really big O. You're going to learn to love big O at some point, so why not start today? 3, 5, 13, 15, and 31 is optional. Um, big ideas here are big O. Uh, that's the main thing. We're also going to see big omega, which is funny, big O mega, so big, big O, and uh, big, I guess big theta, I think it's just theta uh, notations. So um, I'm going to give you a definition, and I want to play with it a little bit, and then I, I want to give you a little bit of context, and we're going to probably not see a whole lot of examples in this video. I'll probably do more examples in another video, but I just want to kind of shock you into thinking that you need to know about this. So I'm going to define, let f and g be functions from, and, and I'm going to say from r to r, but in practice, This is going to be the naturals, and this is uh, the naturals, or the naturals union zero, uh, and and this this is also probably going to be the naturals, um, oftentimes because in practice, for for a lot of you, the, the the time that you're going to be using this most of the time, is going to be in um, in, in the analysis of algorithms and runtime of algorithms. Okay, so in that case, you're dealing with a discrete set of data. You know, it's it's n items, and you know that the algorithm is going to run in some function of n time. So let f and g be functions. In this case, from r to r, we say f is big O of g. So we write it like f equals big O of g. If there exists C and K positive, remember if I, if I say C and K are positive, that means that they're at least real numbers. Oftentimes we're going to pick C and K natural numbers, but in particular, they're positive real numbers, such that for all N greater than, and sometimes we're going to say greater than K, sometimes we're going to say greater than or equal to K, either way is fine. If you um, if you define it like this, it's going to imply the other definition, so you're, you're, you're fine. Um, so, well, if, if you use the other definition, it, it will imply this definition. So this is, this, is, uh, this is fine. We have absolute value of f of n is less than or equal to c times the absolute value of g of n. Oops. Now, um, when we're using this, we're typically going to ignore the absolute values, okay? We're going to typically... The absolute values. Uh, the absolute values are definitely supposed to be there, but it's just, again, if we're dealing with natural numbers like usual, then we can ignore those um, because it's just positive quantities. Now, that's that said, you should still see the definition correctly at least once. So here it is correctly once. Um, if there exists, uh, so, so basically this is talking about how, how quickly the functions grow. And we'll, we'll talk more about context in a little bit, but I'm just going to um, get the other definitions out. Uh, so we say that f is big omega of g if there exist constants c and k positive, such that for all n greater than or equal to k, we have absolute value of f of n is greater than or equal to c times absolute value of g of n. And finally, so it's the same, same idea, except we've got a greater than instead of a less than. So um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of context in a minute here, but finally, we say f is big theta of g if f is big O of g and 
f is big omega of g. Now you notice that if f is big O of g, this is the same as writing g is big theta, uh, sorry, not big theta, big omega of f, and this is the same as writing uh, g is big O of f. Okay, so these are sort of interchangeable. But the big one, the main thing that you're going to have to deal with from this section is this definition right here. Uh, I, I guess, I guess we got f going from r to r. But this is the main one. These also matter, but I would say if, if I had, if you have uh, nine, uh, if you have, if you have ten points of attention to spend on this section, put nine of those points on this definition and just sort of be aware that there's this other definition for, for this class. Um, most of what you're trying to do with big O is bound how large something gets. So typically you're going to say, well, I, I, want an, I want an upper bound for it. I want another worst case scenario. Um, so these lower bounds, you're typically not going to need. Uh, that said, they're still important. Uh, let me do a quick example. And like I said, we'll probably have to do more examples um, another time. But let's show that, let's say, 3n squared uh, plus 2 is big O of n cubed. Okay, so in order to show this, what I need to do is find these constants C and K. By the way, the C, the C and K are called witnesses. You might hear this term. So they're called witnesses. Uh, so we just need to find C and K that make uh, this hold for all sufficiently large n. So I'm going to be a little, um, a little lax on this. In order to prove this, I just need you to find those C and K and, and verify that they work. I, d I don't need you to go through, in order to prove this, we need to demonstrate the blah, blah, blah. You know, a lot of times with proofs, I'm a bit more uptight. But with this, I'll be a little bit laid back because students struggle with this so much as it is. But um, anyways, what I want to do is I need to find c and k positive numbers such that for all n greater than or equal to k I have that the absolute value of f of n is bounded above by c times the absolute value of g of n. Okay, that, that is what it means to, for f to be big O. And here I used the word is. You know, I didn't, I didn't write an equal sign, I just used the word is here, and that's fine. Uh, we say f is big O of, of g, or equals big O of g. So use those interchangeably. Um, so in order to do this, I need to just find the C and K that work. So I'll, I'll give you some hints as we go on in class, but for now, uh, I'm just going to pick C equals 3 and hope for the best. So then when I pick C equals 3, I write this equation down with C equals 3. So I write 3n squared plus 2 less than or equal to uh, an absolute value less than or equal to three times the absolute value of n cubed. Now, I'm going to go on ahead and assume that we're dealing with, uh, because k is positive, and I'm only dealing with n bigger than k, I'm going to assume that n's are positive, and if the n's are positive, that means both of these expressions are going to be positive. So I can actually ignore the absolute values, and that's what I was saying, is a lot of times we're not going to need the absolute values even though they're, they're there. Okay, now I'm looking for some condition n bigger than something, and then as long as I pick a k bigger than that, I win. Um, so I'm going to just treat these like parentheses for now. And what I like to do is I like to get n by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3n squared. And that equation, th this inequality, turns into 1 plus 2 over 3n squared, less than or equal to, I've got 3n cubed divided by 3n squared, and that's just n. Now that this, so, so this side becomes this side, this side becomes this side. Now here, I notice that I've got 1 plus something that shrinks as n gets bigger, right? n's positive, so we can, we can you know, we just need this to happen for sufficiently large n. 
So we don't need to worry about if, if n is 0. We don't need to worry about dividing by 0 here because we we just need this for big N. So what what qual how, how do we quantify big? What's big enough? Well, let's just assume that n is at least 1 for, for starters. Okay, if n is at least 1, what is this? This is 1 plus 2 thirds. Okay, if n is at least 1, this is 1 plus 2 thirds. 1 plus 2 thirds is bigger than 1. So so I would have 1 bigger than something that's bigger than 1. That, that's not true. So let's pick a, a bigger n. Let's, let's see what happens if n is 2. If n is 2, then this side would be 2. And this side over here is going to be 1 plus 2 over, well, 3 times 4, that's 12. But 1 plus 2 over 12, that's 1 plus something less than 1. This thing is going to be uh, less than 2. And we notice that this function is decreasing in n. So once, I, once I've gotten uh, to something that's smaller, where, where the right-hand side is bigger than the left-hand side, since this function is decreasing, I can just go from there. So I pick k equal to 2 as the left-hand side, remember, left-hand side, is less than or equal to 2 when n is bigger than or equal to k. And now I am done. And this tends to confuse a lot of students, okay? So I want to stop here uh, and let you rewatch this video, and then I'll, I'll come back another time after you've had, had some chance, uh, had some time for sort of this sea of symbols to wash over you. And then I'll do some more sort of computational examples. The complaints I often get as, as students say, well, why didn't you just show us how to do the examples first? Um, if you focus too much on examples, you'll know how to solve a certain number of examples, but as soon as something gets outside of those few special cases, then you can really be in trouble. And I'll, I'll just warn you that this, this gets really complicated further down the road. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to, it's gonna take a little bit longer to, to get your sea legs, as it were, but hopefully it's, it's worth the wait. So please, like I said, maybe try to rewatch this thing again. Again, the, the idea is I'm just finding C and K that make this statement true, okay?